request on can I cover a deep dive on waves. So I'm just going to bring up CoinGecko here and start right from scratch. A big thing that I look at right away is the total supply versus the circulating supply. Max supply being infinite is not really a good sign for me. This is where renouncing the contract, not being able to produce any more, is a big aspect that I look at. We love Bitcoin because there's a max supply. There will never be more than 21 million Bitcoin. As far as the price, we always look at 95 to 98% down from all time high, plus minus 2% depth, $145,000. We can do a lot with this coin. So it is traded pretty well everywhere. Community based stack of decentralized open source technologies to build scalable, user friendly apps. User friendly is definitely needed more and more uh, for mainstream adoption. As far as what they're working on, this is where I get a bit more excited, I want to say. So layer one solutions, you know, is it just a copy of Ethereum like Hex is, or is it actually proving something? Is it actually here to build something new? I'm not seeing a whole lot of TVL, 250 validators. So at least we're fairly decentralized. So it's compatible with Ethereum. Uh, I don't know if everyone's looked at the liquidity flows lately, but pretty much everything has died off except for Ethereum. So the roadmap hasn't been updated. June, 2022 is the last. Partnerships are always good. Liquidity provisioning on the DEXs, high APR. We saw how that pans out with Cyber, right? Not super stoked. Their Twitter, at least they're they're very active. They're very engaged. Because some of these ones, they, they just wake up. That's where you got to check the developers, the development as well. No articles in two years. And they've been around for quite some time as well. So five years, they got a good reputation. That's where some of these really turn around quickly too. So making big improvements to the main net. This is where it gets, yeah, <laughs> this is where I'm starting to get excited. These guys have been dubbed the Russian Ethereum. And that's because most of the team is out of Ukraine and Russia. They, they had up to a 3 billion market cap, but they achieved this without any venture capital funding, which I thought was really cool. Yeah. So it grew organically, there's been no there. VC funding is a huge bonus. Yeah, in life. Right? Huge, huge. That means you don't have anyone like FTX or Alameda Research that have big, big control over that. So they do have a native uh, stablecoin, USDN, yeah. and they did have a DPEG event, and they've been okay. designing their own. With what they're building, I would be very interested just because of the development. If they've got that much firepower without VC funding, I can just imagine what they're going to do when they start bringing in big partnerships like we saw with Twitter. They're starting to land these big partnerships. They're already working with banks. They're already doing some of these big things that we need for adoption. But it's just a matter of how do we navigate this to the best of our abilities to position for long-term success and make life-changing gains along the way. It's not just about the technology, but what we do with it.